bubbles. I'm inspired to create something with bubbles. So I'm starting off in my mini circle journal. This is my 18 inch circle journal and I'm going to cover the entire page with a piece of the tissue wrap, a postal tissue wrap from Tim Holtz. And I'm going to glue that down using the matte medium from Mod Podge. This is the matte one, not the glossy one or the satin one. I prefer the matte version to stick stuff like this down. This is a straightforward process. All you have to do is, or well, the way that I like to do it, is just to put a little bit of the matte medium on one side. That's going to secure one end and then you can then add the rest of the glue without the fear of the tissue moving or wrinkling or getting in the way. So all you have to do once you've then completely covered your page is just to roll it over. And this helps to eliminate getting bubbles and wrinkles or unwanted bubbles and wrinkles because sometimes we do want them in there but in this case I didn't so I wanted to get rid of as many as I possibly could so I'm smoothing it out with the brush. And as always when I'm happy that it's all nicely stuck down and it isn't going to go anywhere we need to dry it before we can move on so out comes the heat gun and give it a little blast to make sure it's all done. So it's time to add some colour to the page. So first of all, I'm going to use the Lagoon acrylic paint from the Design Objectives or Do Crafts. This is a UK based company. These are very inexpensive acrylic paints. I'm also going to add on the Periwinkle acrylic paint from the same company. And once I've got a few blobs of that down, I'm also going to add soft green. So just a couple of spots going down there. Then I'm going to grab a baby wipe and then I'm going to blend all of the colours together with the baby wipe just across the page and just smooth all those colours together. I don't particularly want total blends, I just want a nice kind of mixture going across. I'm trying to cover up some of the tissue paper. I don't want that text to show through, but I don't want too much of that text to show through. So you'll see me adding some extra spots of the paint just to cover up certain areas. Um, where I think that the text is showing through too much. But you can never really tell while the paint is still wet. It's not until the paint is actually dry when you can truly see exactly how much of that text is showing through. So I'm going to give it a blast with the heat gun so that it completely dries so I can see whether I need to add any more paint. Now that the paint's dried I can see that there is too much of the text showing through so I want to add some more spots of the paint onto the background of the page but instead of using the baby wipe I'm going to use a sponge and just stipple it over the top just to kind of blend out the areas that I don't want to show through too much. And this is the periwinkle paint that I put on earlier on. I'm not going to put any of the darker colour on the lagoon colour because I think that's dark enough where it is but I do want to add some more of that green in there so I will be using the soft green again in a second and applying it in the same way that I'm applying the periwinkle now. And of course, before we can move on to our next stage, we need to make sure it's all dry. So out comes the heat gun, just to give it a quick blast and a once over. So to add some interest into the foreground of my page, I'm going to use this Laurel Leaves stencil from Indigo Blue and the Leaf Green Archival ink from Ranger. And I'm just going to apply that ink through the stencil using a cosmetic sponge. Now I can buy these cosmetic sponge by the hundred in a bag from my local um, pharmacist because they just seem to have tons and tons of these things at very very inexpensive prices and they are ideal for putting ink through a stencil. So as you can see I'm varying the leaf type on the stencil I'm just moving it backwards and forwards across the page 
and just adding in smaller bits. I'm just building up at the sides just to build a little bit of a foreground. And I do want to add a little bit of more darker color into this as well. So I do have a second ink color that I want to apply once I finish this one. So I'm happy with the foreground colours and the plants coming up from the bottom but I do need to make sure the archival ink is dry and to do that I just want to give it a quick blast with the heat gun just to dry it before I can add on my darker colour. And in this case it's going to be the fern green. Now I thought this fern green was going to be a lot more darker in tone or shade than the leaf green but actually it's not that much different. So you do see a little bit of darkness but not as much as I was actually hoping for. Because the colour wasn't as dark as I thought it was going to be, I decided not to really go too mad with it. Uh, I may come back later and add a little bit of brown in, but I'm still unsure about that one as yet. But I still want to make sure that it's nice and dry. So again, out comes the heat gun, and then we can move on to the next stage. So for the next stage, I'm going to use this Under the Sea stamp set from Gina K Designs. Now this was sent to me as part of a Happy Mail package quite some time ago. And I put it to one side because I'm not really an, uh, a fish or under the sea kind of person. So I wanted to keep it just in case because you never know when the inspiration is going to hit you like it did today. So I'm using the Jet Black Eye Carver Link from Ranger and I'm just going to stamp the fish image onto a sheet of um, paper stock that I've had in my stash forever and thought that the yellow would work, would work really, really well on the page. So what I'm going to do now is I was just about to start, as you call it, fussy cutting it or fancy cutting it. And I managed to get about half of the tail done before I realized, no, I'm actually gonna be better off doing this with a knife. So what I do is I put my scissors away. Um, I can work better with a craft knife. So that's what I decide to do. I'm gonna cut the entire thing out with a craft knife instead. Now that my little fishy is cut out, I just need to hide those raw edges on the paper. So to do that, I'm going to use the Memento Tuxedo Black Dual Liner Pen. I'm going to use the brush tip and I'm just going to go around the edges just to cover up any white bits that I may have not cut out 100%. It also helps just to blend it in a little bit. It gives it a bit more of a professional finish. So now that my little fishy is done, I need to prepare my page. So all I need to do to prepare it is just to cut off the excess tissue paper from around the outside, just using a pair of scissors. Thank you. 
And now that my edges are done, I can glue my little fish down onto my page. And to do that, I'm just going to use a craft glue stick from Prit, which is just like any other kind of collage glue stick you can purchase, quite inexpensive. And I'm just going to stick him down on my page. So now that he's all stuck down, I can now add my bubbles, which was my inspiration for this page in the first place. So for that, I'm going to put out some titanium white paint. This is the titanium white acrylic paint from Reeves. And I've grabbed a couple of bottle caps and spray caps um, from my stash that I use for mark making. And I'm just going to put some paint on the edges and then add some white circles to the page, which I'm going to turn into bubbles. And I have two sizes of cap that I'm going to use, one larger and one slightly smaller. So it does give me a little bit of variation in the circle size. I'm not going to go too mad with all the circles, I only wanted a couple of columns of them coming through so I just want to make sure that they're dry before I move on. So out comes the heat gun, just give it a quick blast and then I can add some detail in in a little while. To add the detail to my bubbles I'm going to use the Signo White Opaque Roller Ball Pen from the Mitsubishi Pen Co and I'm just going to add in my highlights onto my bubbles just using the pen. Now where the paint didn't go on quite as thick I can use this pen then just to thicken up the lines and make them a bit more prominent uh, and just make them stand out a little bit more from the background. This is my go-to pen when I'm wanting to add white highlights so I'm now happy with the amount of highlights I'm just going to just increase the colour of the outside of that uh, ring that, or the bubble that I've just put down there. Now you may have also noticed that I haven't cleared away the white paint in the top right hand corner because I'm usually a tidier crafter than that, that's because I wanted to use it. So I've just spritzed it with some water, I have my fan brush and I'm now just going to add some speckles of white paint into the background or, or just over the page just to add a little bit more of that bubble kind of effect but different sizes. And of course we don't want to be smearing or smudging those lovely speckles of white paint that we have on our page and the best way to do that to stop it from smudging is to dry them so out comes the heat gun before i even attempt to move on to the next stage so using the same stamp set again i'm going to use the sentiment from the set called or that says just keep swimming and again um, the archival or the jet black archival link i've just mounted the stamp up onto a block and I'm just going to stamp that sentiment or the quote just above my little fish. And I just wanted to add a little bit more detail. There are some very, very small silhouette fish stamps in that set. So I just wanted to add a couple of those so they look as though they're fishes that are in the distance. So I'm just only going to use just the one add the black ink to it and then just add one or two to the background of the page. And that's pretty much it for this page. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So all I have to do now is just to grab my white pen and do my usual just sign and date and then I'm going to call this page complete. We're done and dusted. It's surprising what you can come up with when you're just inspired by one little thing, isn't it? So I hope you enjoyed watching that. I certainly enjoyed putting that page together. 
uh, a spare of the moment thing. So if you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.